President-elect Yoon Sung Yeol's plan to overhaul the housing market is becoming clearer. His transition team says they're looking at getting rid of a rule put in place recently or changing it. The rule is meant to protect tenants from increases in the large deposits required in Korea's unique system of long-term leases. Critics say the restrictions, while intended to stabilize people's housing, have actually made housing less available because it's made property a less attractive investment and it's said to have pushed deposits higher for units just coming onto the market. Kim Sung-min explains. As widely expected, the law on tenants' rights will be revised or even completely abolished as part of the president-elect's efforts to deregulate the nation's housing market. That's according to the transition team on Monday, which strongly expressed its concern over the side effects of the so-called Housing Lease Protection Act. We have come to an agreement that the tenant protection law is bringing volatility to the market and that a revision should be made to improve it. Changes will be made gradually depending on the market situation. In 2020, certain laws and housing lease agreements for long-term, purely deposited-based rental contracts, also known as tonsei in Korea, were revised to improve the rights of tenants. That included giving tenants the right to extend a two-year term deposit contracts by up to two more years and limiting rent increases to a maximum of 5 percent. Rent contractors were also required by law to report to local governments. While this was aimed at protecting tenants, the reform has faced severe backlash. The cap in rent increase supposedly limited the supply into the market as people were discouraged from buying to rent. People who have money used to buy houses and provide them for tenants to rent, but now they don't do that and therefore no longer contribute as suppliers to the market. The supply bottleneck was aggravated with more homes unavailable due to long-term contracts, ironically making it more difficult for people looking for homes. The reforms were also seen to have caused rental prices to shoot up by causing new rental contracts to start at a higher price. In fact, the increase in average housing prices in Seoul have skyrocketed since 2020 when the laws took effect, jumping over 10 percent for second straight year. The average price in Seoul for Tonse hit almost 550,000 U.S. dollars in February. And the market is currently overheated as a whole, with the average price of medium-sized units in Seoul surging to $1.3 million. The transition team is mulling ways to make gradual changes to prevent volatility in the market. One option would be to give incentives to landlords who voluntarily provide units at prices cheaper than the market average or who agree on long-term contracts. While a complete abolishment was also mentioned, market watchers say it could take some time if not being impossible altogether, as it will require approval of the Democratic Party of Korea, which has a majority in the parliament. Kim Sung-min, Arirang News.